hey y'all welcome back to my channel so the tea it's the girl lady j back bringing you giving you my thoughts commentary and opinions on your favorite ladies in the female rap game y'all excuse me for my voice um you know the season is changing i got a little cold you can hear it all up in this uh you know all up in my nasal okay i'm a little congested that's why it's been like you know a little bit longer in between videos but you know on top of other things got personal shit going on but you know the only goal is for me to really appear to y'all once a week if you want to catch me like that catch me on twitter okay matter of fact go ahead and follow me on my twitter at snt that is snt with two a's as well as my instagram so let's go ahead and get into what's been going on with your favorite ladies in the female rap game this week all right, so first thing I want to get into is Onika Tanya Mirage, because more stats have been coming out. You know, my last video, she had, you know, she had a rolling baby, but it has been recently reported by Chart Data that she um, is the highest grossing female hip hop tour and act in Billboard history with $27 million accumulated. And, you know, I'm not going to say no names, but a certain blog page tried to claim that Cardi B in 2019, you know, had the highest grossing tour, whatever. I'm not aware of Cardi B ever having gone on a tour. Um, they say it was an arena tour, but baby, go on a tour, a for real tour. Like, I have not seen Cardi B go on an actual, you know, tour. You know what I'm saying? Like a headlining tour. But, you know, maybe child, pull, pull, prove me wrong because last time I checked. But, you know, regardless of that fact or not, um, Nicki is the highest grossing female hip hop touring act in Billboard history. So that's just what it is. Now, Nikki also teased that she got some vocals that just recently came in for Pink Friday 2, and she is gagging, and, you know, people are wanting to know who these vocals could be, people are saying, you know, Beyonce or Rihanna, um, I don't think she would be too gagged by Beyonce since they've collaborated, you know, uh, like twice before in the past, but, you know, so has her and um, Rihanna, so rather it be Beyonce or Rihanna, but I think she would be a little bit more gagged, and the people a little be, uh, uh, would be a little bit more gagged if it was Riri, because Rihanna ain't put out no music in, like, eight years, so I think people would be a little bit more gagged if it was Rihanna, but, um, honestly, I think Rihanna has hung up, you know, the music act, I think she hung it up like a flash screen, I think Rihanna is pretty much done with music, but if she is that gagged, it could be someone like Rihanna or Beyonce, um, I really don't see, you know, anybody else being too gagged by anybody else, but, um, hopefully, you know, it's one of the two, but regardless, let me know how you feeling, what you think, who you think it is down below. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me, y'all. Like I said, I've I got a little cold, so you got to bear with me. I was going to put off this video another day, but you know, shit, it's been a few, six days already. But, um, anyways, let me know who you thinking and, uh, how you feeling about it down below. And uh, if you're just ready for Pink Friday too, baby, because I know I've seen a lot of people talking about, oh, Mariah Carey is back. That don't mean a goddamn thing, okay? Um, it's been four, five years since Nicki done put out an album, with, uh, since the fourth, you know, album. We we ready for the fifth one, okay? Excuse me. So let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling down below. So the next topic I want to get into is Ice Spice. So Ice Spice was called out for her Halloween costume. Well, not really just the costume, you know, people was talking about it, talking about it was just a basic ass dress or whatever, but, you know, um, they really called her out for her uh, Power 105 Powerhouse performance, you know, because baby girl kept uh, pulling down the dress and she was showing and shaking a lot of ass, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I've seen a lot of negative comments over it. I thought Ice Spice costume ate, I thought she looked real cute. I was liking the black hair, but my thing is... I'm going to just need y'all to say y'all have a problem with Ice Spice because Megan turned around and did the same thing at one music fest. She had her ass out, showing it and shaking it, and people was acting like they were so gagged. Um, but when it was Ice Spice, it was just like, oh, it's trashy, low class. Everybody has something to say about Ice, and not so many people had anything to say about Megan, even though every time you look up, Megan is on the internet or on a uh, stage showing and shaking, you know, all that ass. And to me, it's just the double standard of it all. Like, if you don't like Ice Spice, just say that. If you fuck with Megan Moy, just say that. But to turn around and to be hypocritical and say Ice Spice showing and shaking ass is low class, but Megan doing it is, like, gag worthy, that's bullshit to me. Because Megan, at this point, to me, is a one-trick pony. Every time you look up, she's showing or shaking ass or both. You know what I'm saying? Um, so let Ice Spice show and shake her ass. She got an ass to do it. Megan got an ass to do it. Y'all don't got shit to say when Megan do it. Why you got shit to say when Ice Spice do it? So I just wanted to give my little two cents on that because 
I just saw way too many people going in on Ice Spice at that powerhouse concert and not enough people. It was, it was literally the same people who turned around and went in on Ice Spice was gagging at Megan. And I don't know if it's just because it's a sympathy thing or what, but I just thought it was pretty fucking ridiculous because they, these are two hoes both showing and shaking ass. And I don't mean hoes in the literal sense. Well, Megan, I, I never mind because you know y'all gonna get in y'all feelings but um it's just two girls showing and shaking ass so if you're gonna get mad at one why not keep the same energy for the other but that's just my two cents let me know what you think about it down below now the next topic i want to get into and really quickly who excuse me is um glorilla because people are kind of torn about how dj academics came at glorilla a few days ago now glorilla you know she didn't like the sentiments um, you know, that academics was, you know, had to say about her, her new song, or the fact that, you know, uh, she blocked Kaisenat. And, you know, Glorilla came back pretty hard and, you know, was like, don't speak on me, bitch, and, <coughs> excuse me, all this other type of shit. So, academics came back at Glorilla pretty harshly. Yeah, he called her out her name. You know, he insulted her rap skills. And so a lot of people just felt like, you know, academics goes in too hard on women. Okay. And then on top of that, he turned around and kind of went in on the city girls. And, you know, that's when Saucy Tantana got involved, mostly to stick up for his bestie, Carisha. Now, my two cents on it is, it, Glorilla, I already told y'all how I felt about her with the whole block, uh, block and Kasanat because she tried to turn around. I guess she figured out who he was and she turned around and tried to come back and was like, I'm drunk as fuck. I might unblock Kasanat. And Kai was like, bitch, you know, just like how, you know, Glorilla was in, on the live a few days ago talking about some, if you block, you got to stay there. You made your bed, you got to lay there. Well, when she said she might unblock Kai, Kai was like, no, you, you made your bed. You got to lay there. Ain't that what you told me? So I guess after that, Glorilla didn't like that. And she kind of went live with her goons and they kind of made what some people perceived as threats to Kai. And Kai basically came back um, going live from jail and was like a fake jail at that. It was basically was like, we got Nikki over here. OK, we got JT over here. Ooh, excuse me. We got Ice Spice over here. So he went fucked up about no Glorilla because all them that he named is doing better than her any goddamn way with this cha-cha-cha bullshit. So... Long story short, people are trying to basically paint Glorilla as a victim. Now, to me, Glorilla talked too much shit, and she talked hella shit for her to be anybody's victim. She tried to me to be hard. Like, she wants to be hard. She, you know, she from Memphis. I don't know how Glorilla get down for real, but she give off a vibe like she just so hard. So, I mean, baby girl, eat that shit up. At this point, I don't see Glorilla as no victim. I don't see a lot of these hoes as no victim because a lot of times they make their own bed and you wanted to stay on so hard on the fact that, okay, you block Kai because he didn't like your shit, which was weak as fuck to me. I already told y'all how I felt about that. You know, these girls want these uh, people, these blogs, these streamers, they want them to kiss their ass too bad, even when the shit suck. Like, they don't have thick skin. All they want to hear is praise, praise, praise. They don't ever want constructive criticism. And, you know, Kai was like, I fuck with Gorilla, but this is trash. And it was trash. Bitch, if you think, you know, you're going to block Kai because he thought it was trash, you might as well block 60, 70, 80% of the, the people on the goddamn internet because they calling it trash, too. At the end of the day, take the constructive criticism, go back to the drawing board, and fix that bullshit because that cha-cha-cha shit is not a go whatsoever. And to me, I just kind of felt like, you know, it was weak as fuck for Glorilla to sit up there and double down on the fact that she wasn't going to unblock this man because she felt like he insulted her song. And then turn around and you figure out who he is. Then you want to unblock him. Then you get into it with DJ Academics about the shit. I'm sorry to tell you a lot of what DJ Academics was saying was true about her, you know, dick riding. Because a lot of these uh, rappers, period, be dick riding these, you know, bloggers and streamers paying them to like they shit or say they like they shit when it's really ass. But y'all let me know what y'all thinking and how y'all feeling about it down below. So the next topic I want to get into is Megan. Because as you know, she dropped Cobra. And like I said in my last video, even though people were saying it was giving Anaconda in the visual or the cover art, I really didn't see her giving the same vibe um, sonically and musically as Anaconda, which it didn't. Um, she was talking about depression and suicide and shit, which honestly I didn't think matched the visuals to the song. Which for the visuals to be coming out of her own pocket wasn't bad. I just didn't think it really matched the song too well. Now, as far as the song in general goes, 
I don't really honestly think it has any replay value. And that's my most humble opinion about it. I listened to it and I just, I just really wasn't into it. Like, and uh, people like to say Megan raps for real. I really didn't. There wasn't no metaphors or anything that really just stood out to me or any punchlines that stood out to me. Um, I really think people like to hype Megan's lyricism, honestly. But that's just my humble opinion about it. I've heard better songs from Megan. And this is just not what I would have expected her to have dropped as her comeback single, quote unquote. Um, and y'all can claim that, you know, this wasn't meant to be, you know, something on the charts or something you know, to do so well in numbers. It was just something for her to get off her chest. Well, if that's the case, why did she post this caption on her Instagram? She said, Hotties, I held this huge ass 20 foot snake in real life just for y'all. So you better run Cobra the fuck up. Why would she want y'all to run it the fuck up if it wasn't meant to do well or if it wasn't meant to chart? Why would she want you to run it the fuck up? Okay, because the truth of the matter is it debuted at number 45 on the US Spotify with like 591K streams, which is for a comeback song from a three-time Grammy winner is, you know, blah, okay? And y'all like to drag Last Time I Saw You so much, but Last Time I Saw You debuted at number 23 on the U.S. Spotify with double the streams than Cobra. So why was Last Time I Saw You a flop, but not Cobra? You know what I'm saying? Cobra debuts at number one uh, at number 45 on U.S. Spotify. Last Time I Saw You did number 23 since you want to talk numbers so bad and talk about flops. So, I mean, at the end of the day, Megan wanted y'all to run it the fuck up. She wants you to run it the fuck up, but you claim it's just something for her to get off her chest. I don't believe that, okay? I think she wants this song to do well. I mean, she put money into the visuals. Why put money into all of these aesthetic visuals if you just wanted to put out a song to get it off your chest? If that's the case, she would have just released it as a single with no visuals, in my most humble opinion. So, yeah, she put money and a budget behind this video and these visuals, and she wants y'all to run the run it the fuck up, this song. So, yeah, she wants it to, to do good, and I think she wants it to chart. But I just don't think this was a smart comeback song. I think it was a good song for the album, you know what I'm saying, to put on your album for you to have and get off your chest. But I don't think it was something that should have been put out as, like, a lead single or anything like that. But that's just my two cents about it. And I see a lot of people, you know, trying to say, y'all are crazy. She literally talking about suicide, and y'all are talking about the song. Like, what do y'all want people to do? It's looking like sympathy to me. Like, at this point, it's really looking like, she wants sympathy points or people want sympathy points for her. Like they want you to like the song or not say anything bad about the song just because of what she's talking about in the song. Like she's not the first or the last to talk about suicide and depression in the song. There's plenty of people fucking depressed out here. Okay. So my thing is like, you know, the, the snake thing, like you're being a snake in the video, you're shedding your skin. A lot of people don't already compared you to a snake because you supposedly fucked the nigga that your best friend was fucking behind her back. You know what I'm saying? And, a whole bunch of snake shit that people to call Megan out for. People felt like she was done some snake shit to Nikki when she lied about showing up to Queen Radio and shit. So it's just like, you know, Megan at the end of the day, she's not innocent because she's lied several times. And she's been caught in lies. So, you know, and I'm confused by what it meant to, you know, when she said this pussy is depressed. Like, the fuck do you mean your pussy is depressed? Like, what's going on? I, I'm really confused. Um, and then, you know, she, you know, tried to get shock value by throwing party and a cheating scandal in the song and honestly like I said I just I don't think the song was had any replay value to me but that's just my most humble opinion obviously some of y'all gonna cry about it in the comments but let me know what you think and how you feeling down below now people felt like Nikki was being shady toward Megan because of you know this meme that she had posted the same day Megan had dropped the song now Nikki was to me you know you know getting at it with her fans and having a conversation with the barbs and, you know, this is one of the responses to what some of them were saying, but some people took it as, you know, she was digging at Megan and trying to say that the song that she dropped was trash, which I mean it was. But at the end of the day, it just goes to show you how gun ho people are on, you know, coming at Nikki and trying to attach her to these bitches just for them streams and just for them um, engagements and shit and, and, and uh, what is it, to, to trend and shit, like, People was literally in blogs was posting that fans were saying that Megan or Nikki was shading Megan. And to me, it just seemed like it was just all to get the people into the song and on Megan's side. And it was just weird to me. Like, I didn't understand it. But at the end of the day, people just don't like Nikki. And I get it. They're going to do whatever it takes to attach these new hoes and these, these rap bitches to Nikki. So, again, 
let me know what you think and how you feeling down below but no i do not like the song at all cute visuals somewhat but don't like the song so that's just how i feel so speaking of uh jt real quick i want to get into the city girls so the city girls um album raw debuted at number 117 on the billboard 200 to no surprise because it did like what nine ten thousand in streams or sales <laughs> i don't even know what it did in pure sales bitch but um obviously it's a flop right and it sucks because like i said before to me a lot of the songs on the album wasn't bad at all um but you know at the end of the day like i said they did horrible promotion um they just up and said one day that they got an album coming out the same month it was supposed to drop you know they really didn't push the album at all nobody really knew the album coming until one day we looked up on twitter carisha talking about they you they, they got an album coming on the way <laughs> which honestly um at this point the way they went about this whole thing just makes me more convinced that the city girls won't be a thing too much longer i think they're definitely going to go their separate ways especially seeing how things went on the interview I think, who was they getting interviewed by? I don't know if it was The Breakfast Club. I can remember who they was getting interviewed by, but Carisha was sitting there. You know, Carisha was sitting there with, like, what seemed to be a fucked up ass, think ass, bitch ass attitude. I mean, and it wasn't just the facial expression or her countenance. It was just her whole body language. Like, sitting there with your arms crossed, folded. You know, you looking real stank in the face. Like, especially when... JT was expressing her feelings and thoughts on Nicki Minaj, you know, big up in her and giving her advice and shit. You know, I just, I don't know, it seemed like a little bit off to me. I couldn't help but to notice it. And I mentioned it on my Twitter a few days ago, like, bitch, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you sitting there looking like that? Like, you can't have at least a decent look on your face. I mean, I, I think they said she was upset because they was late. But my thing is, bitch, you there now. You know, you're giving an interview. So, like, look like you want to be there. And then you looking like that when she's speaking on Nikki, like, bitch, like you got some type of animosity or some shit. So, I didn't really like that. And then on top of that, JT also, um, you know, I think she went on Twitter or live or something, and she was expressing her thoughts on Nicki Minaj. And she basically said something that hit the nail on the head for me. And the one thing I took away, which was, you know, all of these other girls speak about female rap unity and it's cool when they collaborate with each other and shit like that and talk to each other. But, you know, when it's Nikki doing it, it's, oh, you know, you, you kissing her ass, you riding her dick. But, you know, it's like when these girls big up, you know, people like Cardi or, or Missy or something like that or Kim, they not, you don't call it dick riding. You don't call it like, you know, kissing ass and shit. But when these girls big up Nikki, oh, they kissing her ass. Maybe just say you don't like Nikki and you don't like the fact that these girls acknowledge who Nikki is and, and that's what you're really mad at. Because I see a lot of these girls, they'll big up Cardi or mention Cardi name and a lot of times it's to spite Nikki and y'all, you know, you reposting it and shit like that. Like, what was it? Megan was just like not too long ago um, was saying how she felt like Cardi gave her so much creativity and bongos and, you know, she don't try to do things her way and she's always, you know, looking for you know, ideas from Megan and shit, boys, some, some shit like that. And nobody called it, you know, ass kissing in. And that's not the first, second, third or fourth time that, you know, Megan had mentioned Cardi, you know, in an interview. And it's not ass kissing in, but, you know, JT does it. And she was like, oh, it's ass kissing, it's dick riding when it comes to Nikki. And I completely 100% agree with that. And I think JT is just being humble because, you know, a lot of people at one point felt like JT was fake and some people still do feel like she's fake. So... But to me, I honestly feel like she's literally just um, humbled by Nikki kind of guiding and mentoring her. And if JT signs with Nikki, I think she would be in a better position, honestly. But honestly, um, I also see it as a double-edged sword because I honestly don't like when, um, excuse me, artists um, try to sign to the person that, you know, uh that they look up to or i don't like when artists sign to other artists um the only time i feel like he was actually successful is like lil wayne jt uh jt lil wayne drake and nikki type situation or a jay-z rihanna kanye situation i've never really seen it successful as much otherwise but i don't think nikki would do jt wrong um but i think she is helping her a lot and i think jt is really just humble about that and I think Carisha Loki kind of feels some type of way about that. But that's just my most humble opinion. You can let me know what you think down below. But now, speaking of JT, real quick, um, 
people feel like Asian Doll was kind of shading JT after, you know, she was giving Nikki uh, so much love and big up in her because Asian Doll had tweeted, you bitches should have shown genuine love years ago, but instead you did. So yeah, you look like a dick riding ass bitch. We all see it. And honestly, I can kind of see why Asian Doll and a lot of people can feel that way because some people still do feel that way, you know, because JT and Carisha was being shady toward Nikki a few years ago, trying to make little diss songs and you know, trying to say they was Team Cardi in interviews, the City Girls is Team Cardi, um, and you know, just to fast forward a few years later, and Carisha is asking Nikki to unblock her, and here JT go, you know, all on uh, Nikki's coattails, and you know, having her be her mentor, but you know, people things, people and things, you know, they change, and people um, are molded and shaped by different experiences and encounters, and I think JT has literally just been shaped by a different encounter and experience with Nikki. And honestly, I really don't see anything wrong with that. Now, Carisha, maybe she just hasn't been getting the same type of treatment as a JT. And I think it's really because she really don't take music and rap as serious as JT does. Where JT is actually looking for constructive criticism, Carisha is, I think, about to exit music. She say she's, you know, not staying here or not going nowhere, but I think that's a goddamn lie. I think it's a facade. Um, I don't see Carisha doing music too much longer, honestly. So I just feel like she, like I said before, she's kind of jealous of that relationship that she got with JT. But back to Asian Doll, I can, like like I say, I can understand why she said what she said. But at the same time, girl, I mean, you was you was fake too, okay? Because when Nikki did that super freaky girl Queens mix, bitch, you know, you was acting like it was a problem. You was acting like it was a problem because... Yo ass wasn't on it. And she had other bitches like Katie got bands and Ogbar on the shit and not you. And you was acting like, you know, a little bit bitter. You was all up in Cardi and them comments and shit. You know what I'm saying? So you you, you was fake too, okay? You you was being funny acting too. So you it's like the pot calling the kettle black. Like, baby, keep it all the way a stack, okay? You can't swallow a real pill now, bitch. So that's just how I felt about it. Yeah, it was some truth to what Asian Doll said, but like I said, at the same time, bitch, last year you was being a little bit funny too because you didn't have it your way and Nikki ain't gave your ass no feature. And I think low-key Asian Doll's a little bit jealous of JT and Nikki's relationship too because Asian Doll has and never will have that or never had that. So let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling down below. So the last topic I'm going to get into is Coyle Ray. So Coyle Ray dropped a new song with Fetty Wap, and I can't remember the name of it right now, but I actually like it. I think it was a cute little bop. And honestly, Koi LeRae, she does drop cute little bops to me. I just think when it comes to her projects and albums, the shit, she just don't know how to really make it cohesive. She don't know how to bring it all together. She don't know how to have a theme. She don't know how to have it make sense. But, you know, she has individual songs separately and little singles that are, you know, little bops. And I actually do like it. Um, even though Fetty Wap is in jail right now, I don't know what he got going on, but... I actually do like the song. And um, I know they also have Koi LeRae. She got another song coming out um, this Friday, I believe, with Lola Brooke. Um, I don't know how that's going to sound. I see Lola Brooke is trying out here. Ooh, excuse me. She recently dropped a song with um, Bryson Tiller, which wasn't too bad. I just don't think anybody really cared because Lola Brooke ain't really been on a scene like that. She only had that one song. But, um, you know, she has been trying to get back relevant i guess but uh Lo and lola brooke is actually talented to me i actually like her but you know people just really don't seem to really care too much for her lola brooke right now you know she kind of got overshined after she wrote the way that one song for over a year but yeah her and koi got a song coming out on november 10th let me know if you hear for it down below now speaking of koi she addressed getting a phone thrown at her by krishan rock because krishan went on the jason lee show i guess or whatever and talked about you know incident with blue face is always some with fucking blue face bitch about you know them having got into it and krishan basically threw a phone at koi and krishan is a lot of things but you know i haven't really seen krishan just come up with this elaborate story of a lie you know everybody thought she was lying when she was pregnant everybody thought that she was lying when she said she was still fucking with blue face and and you know i just think the the details was a little bit too detailed for her to be just made up this whole shit about having, you know, got into some type of scuffle with Koi LeRae. So Koi said, don't believe the cap, clickbait be so corny, but whatever helps push the brand, do what you gotta do, she get old and tired after a while. I'm 26, the drama is just so fucking corny to me. At this point, stay blessed, never got hit in the face with the phone in my life. Now there's a couple of things that have to be unpacked here. Oh, excuse me. So for one, 
you say you never got hit with a phone um, in your life. Krishan never said she hit you on the phone. She said she threw a phone at you. So maybe she missed it, but I definitely think she threw that bitch at you. Okay. And there was evidence of, you know, once upon a time, Koi trying to fuck with Blueface. There was a little video of them being all, you know, kissy kissy or not. Then you're trying to say you 26. The drama is just so fucking corny to you when it gets old at one point. But baby, you was just a few weeks ago getting all up on this internet trying to get at it with Lotto saying you want to fight Lotto and all this type of shit just coming at Lotto. But now when it comes to Krishan, the drama is just so fucking corny to you. I think it's because you know Krishan can beat that ass. And that's just what I honestly think. Because with one bitch, you know, you want to fight. And the next bitch, oh, the drama is just so fucking corny. Like, girl, please. Um, but at the end of the day, let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about it down below. So remember, baby, before you get your panties in the wall, get them off the crack of your ass. This is just my thoughts, commentaries, and opinions. You can let me know yours down below. But remember to keep it cute in them comments, baby. Don't get crazy. You will get blocked till you hear me, okay? But um, y'all let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling down below. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up, like, comment, share, subscribe, baby. You already was here to the end. And you might as well go ahead and follow me on my socials at Southern T, Southern T with two A's, all right? I will catch y'all in the next video.